This is an explanation of how we can make a linked list where we insert in order. So to set the stage for this, let's look at a, a program that does something else that inserts um, at the end of the list. And so the structs that we're using for this is the following. We've got uh, a node, and this node has a data part and a next part. And so we'll just put that in here so we can go back and we can refer to that. And in addition, we'll assume that we already have the code in place to, uh, oh, hang on a second here, let me get this set, pnext, uh, there we go, all right. Um, the other part of the code to go in and display the list. So the main part of the program declares a pointer to the head of the list. And then we call a function to actually build a list, and that's where we're going to put our code. And then back in main after the list has been built, <clears throat> then we call a function to print the list out. So let's assume that uh, we give some output like 2, 4, 6, 8, and then a negative 1. And what this will do is it will uh, append each of the nodes as it comes to the end of the list. So if we were to draw a picture, what happens here is that the program, when we have input, the input is going to be... two, four, six, and the negative one, let's say, and the output. So the list gets built with a two followed by a four, and then by the six, and the output should just be simply two, four, six. And as it reads each one of these, what's happening is, first we have the pointer to the head of the list, and the two gets stored there, and then that's null. And then when the 4 comes in, then the 4 is stored on the list. And then this becomes a pointer that points over here. And then similarly, when the 6 comes in, that's stored in a new node. And then that pointer gets connected back into the list like that. And then when we print it out, we visit these one at a time and print out 2, 4, and 6. Uh, the negative 1 is just indicated that we're done with the input. So if we run this program we see that it actually works. So this is dev C++, which is a small, relatively easy to use environment. So we can run this program, and if we put in 2, 4, 6, and then a negative 1, we see that the output is 2, 4, 6, and uh, it works correctly. So what we want to do, though, is we want to write a program so that it will always put the numbers in order. So this same program, if we were to put some different input, for instance, if, if we were to say 2, 6, 4, and then negative 1, the output is going to be the same. It doesn't insert them in order. We get the same thing, 2, 6, 4. We'd like to do it so that no matter what the output, what the input is, it actually inserts the nodes into the list in order. So in this case, we would get 2, 4, 6. So we go through the list, find the right place to put it, and then insert it into place. So that's the goal. So we want to, um, let's write this down. So the goal is to insert into place. Excuse me here. Goal insert in order into list. So we've been thinking about problem solving strategies that we have to understand the problem then we have to make a plan, break it down, implement our plan, and revise it as needed. So in this case, we want to break this down and think what our plan is. So uh, as we've done in our previous discussions, here we want to think about what are the different scenarios that we need to look at. So I would encourage you, uh, so one of the scenarios would be the list is empty the first time and we do something in that situation. So I'd encourage you to pause right now and figure out what are the scenarios the different scenarios we should consider. And then we can write the code for each of them independently, and then we can put it together, and then we might even consolidate some of that code at the end. So I encourage you to pause for a moment, think about what the different scenarios are, and then um, come back here and we'll take a look at that in just a moment. So go ahead, I encourage you to actually write this down, make a commitment, think about what the scenarios are, and you can test yourself against the content that I'll put up in a moment. 
So um, write this down. If we were in class together, I would encourage you to do this with an elbow partner. But for now, you just do it on your own. So here's what I've come up with. These are the scenarios that I think are important. First of all, if the list is empty and we add the node to the empty list, uh, and then if we're adding a node, but because of the value, it's, just, it's the smallest number, so it goes on the front of the existing list, or if we have an existing list and we add this as the last node on the list, so putting it to the very end, so it's the biggest number of all the numbers, or if it's a number that's somewhere in the middle. So we're going to look at each of these in turn. So the next step that I would like you to take as you are working on this uh, is draw a picture for each of the above scenarios showing what it looks like um, before and after. Uh, and then this, just for consistency, use p head as the list head pointer and use p temp as a temporary pointer. So I'm going to illustrate for the first one, and then I'll take a break again and invite you to do one or several of the others. So we're going to look at each of these in turn. So the first one is adding a node to an empty list. <coughs> so if we were to look at the picture, what this looks like, it would look like a following. And actually, I'll copy all these down since we're going to do all of these one at a time. All right. So this first one, adding a node to an empty list. So we start out and we've got p head and p head points to null. And then we have some node that's going to come in with some values, so we would get a new node with ptemp. So let's say we have ptemp, and we get a new node using ptemp. So it points to a node. And let's say our input is a number 2. So, or let's say, uh, let's choose something in the middle. Let's say it's a number 5. So 5 gets stored into the node. This gets null. And um, and then we'd have p head point to it. So just to be uh, clear, before we have uh, just p head by itself. Then in the middle we get a new value for p temp, and we make that node. And then afterwards, what this should look like is we should have p head, and it points to the node that has the five in it with a null pointer at the end. So what would be, so this is the first scenario of what it would look like. Um, the next step would be to think about um, what would be the code to do this. So what we would want to do is, uh, given p head and p temp, first thing we want to do is allocate the space for the new node and store the number 5 into it and then put null into it like that. Then the second thing that we would do is we would have uh, p head and we do the pointer so that p head now points to 5, where it used to be null, uh, where it does that. So we can write the code to actually do this, and that code would be something along these lines here. So uh, first thing we'd say p temp equals new node, and that is this part right here. And then after you get the new node, the next thing is we want to take the user input. So assume that previous to this, we have some variable user input and has a value 5 in it. So int input is equal to 5. We maybe be reading it from the keyboard. So uh, we have that value 5. Next thing we need to do is we need to store the value 5 inside the node. So we use a ptemp pointer. So it would be ptemp. And we say p temp arrow, and when we do arrow, the effect of the arrow means it goes into the box, so it takes us to there. And then we do 
p temp arrow and then we think about just this portion where the 5 is right there. That's where we want to store the 5. And if we look at our struct, we can see the names for those two pieces are we have the data portion and the pnext portion. So the data portion is the portion on the left. So p temp arrow data is equal to whatever the input was, in this case the value 5. So that's now stored that 5 into place right there. So um, next thing we want to do is we want to put the null into the next pointer. And so we do that by saying p temp arrow p next equals, and we could just say equals p head, because p head starts to be null. So we are adding a node to an empty list here, and so we know that p head is null. So once we've done this, uh, we now have this configuration right here. So the last thing we want to do is reassign p head so that p head now points to the node that it looks like this. And so then that last statement would be p head equals p temp, just like that. And that's basically it for this scenario. So I would invite you to take a break now and consider the next scenario, which is adding at the front of an existing list. What would that look like? So take a break, make your drawing, and I'll come back in just a second and explain what I have for that. All right, so here's the scenario that I would suggest uh, to you what this could look like. So we start out and we have p heads pointing to a single node that has a 5 in it, uh, as shown here. And then we get some new input that takes the number 3. So we make a new node with a number 3 in there and use p temp to keep track of that. And what we want to do is we want to connect it up. Now notice that 3 comes before a 5. So in this case, we're adding to the front of an existing list. And so we would uh, put that at the front. So we have to write some code to figure out how do we know that that's true. So that's, that's uh, something separate. But once we've done this, then we want it to look like this. 3 goes before 5. So now head points to 3, 3 points to 5, and uh, 5 points to null, and then we're done. So then the question is, how do we know if something goes at the front of the list? Well, so we need to go through the list and take our existing input, in this case, which is a 3, and then keep looking ahead, one, one character, one node ahead, and when we find that this number is less than the one that's after it, then we stop. And that's the point at which we need to insert it into the list. Now, in this case, this would be at the very beginning of the list. So we'd be comparing and seeing, is this less than the node that's at the front of the list? So uh, let's take a look at what the code would be to do this. So similar to what we did up above, assuming that we already know that this is the situation, that this node goes at the front of the list, then what would the code be to actually put it in place there? Um, so I encourage you to pause this video and go and try and write that and then come back and compare and see what you got. So interestingly here, uh, here's what we see. So uh, here is the suggestions I have for you. So uh, first thing that happens is we get our input, in this case, say it's the value 3, and let's assume that three uh, that input has already been declared previously. You know why this keeps jumping down like that. Uh, so we get a new node, and then with this new node, we put the data, um, the input into it, and then we assign the pointer to point to p head. So that's going to point there like that. That's what this line does right there. And then the last thing, p head equals p temp. So p head is going to point to this one after that one already points there. So first we do that. And then we do that, which gives us this configuration right here. So if we look at this code, it's interesting to note that this is exactly the same as that. So in fact, adding a node to an empty list and adding at the front of an existing list ends up being the same code. So then when we write that, we can take that into account and just make um, 
that code work for both of the conditions. All right, so let's go on to the next case. Again, if you're just listening to this and you're not actually going through and trying to write these, you will not get as much benefit out of it. So I really, really urge you, encourage you to be drawing these pictures and writing this code as we go. So next case, case number three here adding as the last node of an existing list. So this would be where the value, where we have an existing list, let's say a three and a five like we have here, and then the value would be seven, so it goes at the end of this existing list. So I encourage you to draw a picture of what this would look like both before and afterwards, and then we'll go through the same process of writing the code in just a moment. So, all right, here we go. So in this case, here we have a list with three and a five in it. And with this three and the five, we're gonna add uh, the input. In this case, the input is seven. So first thing is ptemp makes a new node, it has the value seven that's stored into it. And we would end up going through the list and looking ahead. So here we say, all right, so is seven bigger than three? Yeah. And in fact, we keep looking ahead. Say, is seven bigger than five? Yes. And we keep looking ahead until we're either at the end of the list which is equal to null, or in the case of this last one, we're adding to the middle of an existing list. So um, in this case, we know that this node is going to go all the way at the end of the list. And so um, what we want to have happen is that we want to get the new node, put the 7 into it, make that equal to null, and then take the existing end of the list and connect it like that. So once we've done that, then it gives us this configuration right here. So here we have to consider the code to do this. Uh, and the first thing we have to think about is how do we know where to put this? We don't know how long the list is. So we have to bump along the list, looking ahead. And so we're going to check two things. First thing we're going to check to see is if this so, so we're going to have a, a temporary pointer, and we'll check to see if its next pointer is not null, and if it is um, smaller than this one here, and bigger than this one. So we're going to take a look at that code. So one correction here is we have to make sure this is not null and our number is still bigger than the next one. So if this here is um, our, a pointer to our iterator, um, or a pointer to the insert point, let's call it that, um, then to refer to this spot right there, um, that would be p insert arrow, p next, arrow data. That's how we get to that portion and look ahead. So uh, let's take a look at what that would be. So we first are going to declare our, so I encourage you to take a break right now and actually write the code to do this uh, if you haven't already done so. So uh, we'll create a node uh, of the for the insert point and we'll start that out to be the same as the pointer to the head of the list and next we will have a while loop and while um, p insert arrow p next is not equal to null and and then the second part of this is going to be the look ahead where we actually follow that arrow and look at that compared to our current point right there. And so this would be p insert arrow p next arrow. So we follow that arrow into the next box. So that's taken me into this box here. And then by specifying the p, the data part of it, then that gives us that value right there. And while the data, um, so while this number is bigger than the data is what we want to say. 
So here we also have, oops, the input, the user input in this case. And in this case, let's say it's seven, right? So here we want to say while the input is bigger than that next one, then we keep bumping our way down the list. So while that's true, what is it that we're going to do? So we are going to keep moving our iterator down the list. So that would be P insert. And we want to make it point to the next one. So equals P insert arrow P next. So let's think about what this would look like. So in this case, we start out uh, at this top part right up here, where it says node star p insert equals p head. In other words, it points to the same thing that the head points to. And then while p insert arrow p next is not equal to null, so while p insert p next, that's this, is not equal to null. Well, here, is it equal to null? It's not. So we pass this first part of the test we passed. And second part and input is greater than, so our input is this value 7 in this case, uh, and while the input is greater than, and now here we look ahead, so while it's bigger than the next node's value, okay, so is 7 bigger than 5? Yes it is, and so what are we going to do? We're going to take p insert and we're going to advance it, so this is going to go away, P insert equals P insert arrow P next. So this is P insert arrow P next. What is it? That's the address of this node. And so we put that address into here, and the way we draw that is like that. So that's what happens when we do that line one time. And then we loop back up because we're in this while loop, and second time through, while P insert arrow P next is not equal to null. P insert arrow takes us into the box. P next is this part of it right there, but it is equal to null. So in this case, this condition right here is false. So it stops doing this, and we drop through down here, and now we can actually have the code to add things and, and, and put them in place the way that we want. All right, so let's now write the code. So now we know that we have our input, we have insert, um, and we can do this same stuff as we've done before. So let's do that. We can just copy that code from the previous cases up here. So get a new node and store the input into the data portion of it. Uh, and then here we have this little bit of code to iterate and find out where it needs to go. And in order to make the connections so that it looks like that, now we need to write that code here. So assuming we're at the end of the list, like that, write the code so that ptemp gets added at the end of the list so that it looks like that. So I encourage you to take a break, try and write that code, uh, and then come back and take a look and compare. Okay, so we uh, have the value 7 in the node, and ptemp is pointing to it, and we have our insert point, so we're going to say ptemp uh, arrow pnext equals this thing, and really could just say null, right? Uh, insert we could just say null how about that uh, so that puts the null character there and next thing we want to do is we want to make the insert node point to ptemp so that's going to be p insert arrow p next equals so p insert arrow p next. So p insert follows this link. Arrow takes us into the box. The p next part is this part right there. And what is that equal to? Well, we want this. 
to be the address of this one. So where's that address stored? It's stored right there in ptemp. So equals ptemp. And so what that does is it takes this and it points it there like that. And then we're done. So the 3 points to the 5, the 5 points to the 7, and that's what we have right there in our list. Okay, so now next step is to go in and uh, this last condition down here, adding to the middle of an existing list. So let us... Um, draw the picture to do that and so take a break from the video draw the picture to do that and uh, and then come back and compare your results okay so here's our diagram in this case now we have our existing list with these values 3 5 and 7 and then we have some new input. this is the value of 6 so we get a new node using ptemp and we put our value 6 into this new node. Then we need to go through and find the spot where it goes. And so, in fact, we can use the same code that we used up here to find the location where it needs to go. So we uh, take a look, and while this point, well, that's not null, and, uh, and, and 6 is bigger than this next one, then we advance our pointer, so we come to here. While this is not null, which is true, and while 6 is bigger than that, advance the pointer. Well, it's not bigger anymore, so we now stop and we've found our insert point. So now we're going to insert after this node right here. So uh, then we just have to write the steps to do that. So take a moment, um, and so once we've inserted 6 into the list, so this one will be pointing to 6 and this one points to 7, which ends up looking like this. You could write these in a row, but to save space, I just wrote it in that way. So now let's write the lines of code to actually uh, represent this. And again, I suggest that you look at our solution, what we had up here, to help you. What I did here was take the code from up above and just copy it down just as is uh, and just change the input to be 6 instead of 7 in this case. The other thing I did is I jotted in the insert point for both of these to show you where it would be at the end of our loop. Um, the thing that's not quite right is this part right here. So let's take a look at that. So we have our scenario and ptemp down here P temp arrow P next, that's this part. We need to make it point there like that. So what is it when it points there at the address of that node? Where is the address of that node stored? It's stored in there. How do we get to that? We say P insert arrow. We follow the arrow, takes us into the box, and we get the P next part of it. So it's P insert arrow P next. And that is what we want to put here instead of null. So P in P insert arrow p next like that so if you think about it think about this case up here p insert arrow p next gives us null so in fact we could do the same exact thing in the code up above and the reason this is important is we have an eye towards consolidating this stuff um, when we put all this in a program so I'm going to change this one up here to also be P insert arrow P next as shown. All right, so P insert arrow P next means that that value gets stored into here. So we get that portion right there on that line. Um, next step of what we need to do, let's give ourselves a little bit of extra space here, is then we want to take this value and make this point down there. So how do we get to that? Again, that is P insert arrow P next. That's what we get. So P insert arrow P next is going to be equal to P temp. And that's what's going to draw that arrow like that. So P insert arrow P next is equal to, oh, look at that. It's already there, uh, just like that. So um, when we look at this code and the case above it, 
we see that add, adding to the middle of an existing list and adding at the end of a list up here is the same code because in both cases we get a pointer and the pointer bounces its way down the list until we, we stop at the node and we're inserting after that node. And so then our code uh, works um, for both of these cases the same way. All right, so we've now handled a case of adding to an empty list, case number one. Case number two, adding to the front of an existing list. And then case number three, adding as the last node of an existing list. So um, the next thing to do is try and figure out which portions of this code are the same for all of these. And if we look at these, we can see that, first of all, we're getting the input. That's going to be done in a loop. We're doing that same thing for all of them. And then getting ptemp and storing the data into ptemp, we're doing that the same for all of them. And, um, and then we have some code that's in common in these two cases up here. And we have some code that's in common in these two cases down here. So uh, next thing is to take these sections of code and line them up next to each other so we can identify the portions that are the same. Actually, yeah, let, let's do that uh, just for a moment. So um, left to right, put the four cases of code, and then it should be more obvious what is the same in all of them. And then we'll take it and copy it over and put it into a program and actually make the program run. So um, rewrite, write the four sections of code next to each other, left to right, to help us identify sections of code they have in common. All right. So go ahead and do that, and then check back here once you've done with it. All right, so the code has been copied down here. We can see that the code is very similar for these first two cases, and we can see that it's also very similar for the last two cases. don't know why it keeps jumping like that. Uh, and so we also see that this is the same for all of them, so we're going to want to take that, put that first, and then afterwards, put the code for the other cases. Also, we're going to need if statements to check which of the four cases is true. So this first case is if it's an empty list, that'll be easy if p hat is equal to null. Uh, the second case, if it goes before the first node and there's an existing node, and that would be fairly straightforward as well. So we will, um, we could add that code. Actually, we could add it right in here, I suppose. So, well, let's just do that when we get to the program. So let's now go get the context of the existing program. So here we have the program that we've dealt with in the past. And what we're going to do is in our loop, when we read in this number that's not a negative one, here we read it in, uh, then we're going to put that code in place right here. So we will erase all of this and then we will put the code in place. So the first thing we're going to want to put in here is this code that all of these have in common. So we have input, and so let's grab this code and put it over here. And in this case, uh, let's fix the spacing for these. Um, number is what we're using instead of input. So let's change that if, uh, let's see here, temp equals new node, and we're getting its number instead of input. So we'll change that here, number, like so. So if it's not negative in one, we get a new node, we store the number into the list, and we, uh, set the next pointer, and then we go on from there. So let's see how we're doing here. P head equals P temp. We've got to put that in there too. All right. 
Okay, and we need to have an if statement for, so this first part, this is done for all four of the cases, those top couple of lines getting the new node, storing the input part, and um, um, so those couple lines are for both the first one for data for all of them. So we have those in common. So the next thing is we want to identify these first two cases. So the first case uh, is going to do, so this bottom part of the code, this bottom half from here down, that's going to be different depending on the case. But these first two are the same. So let's try and combine them and put them in there. So this would be is if, so this is if it's a new node, and that's going to be true, is if p head is equal to null. So we can put that to our program. Uh, let me just check new node and the input. So um, if so we have our four cases. So if this is um, the first node on the list, or if it is at the beginning of an existing list, then we do these two lines of code right here. P temp P next equals P head and then be head equals p temp, as we saw right here for both of these. So we have to think about what's the condition for that. So we need an if for that. So that's going to be if something here. Uh, and then we will have an else. And here for this else, then the second condition will be, um, let's look, what was our second condition? Um, our second condition, adding at the front of an existing list, if, sorry, the third condition is what we want, the last node of an existing list. This is the last node of an existing list. Else, so there's going to be some other if in here. Else, in this case, this is the last one. And in this case, it's else. Um, this node gets in, new node gets inserted inserted into middle of existing list. All right, and now we can put the different pieces of code into place for these conditions. So this first one here. Get our braces all lined up the right way. Get these things tabbed over, and we need the if condition for this. Um, so if it's the first node, so that'd be if p head is equal to null, or, and now we want to know if it's at the beginning of an existing list. So what would that condition be? So if it's at the beginning of an, an existing list, we have to make sure, let me see that it's less than the existing node. So we have to make sure that there is another node. So if p head is not equal to null, and we know there's already an existing node. Um, and so it would be if our number is less than p head arrow data. Okay, I think that might do it. So let's look here. So our number three input in this case 
is less than p head arrow data. I think that'll work for the second condition. And here, p head is equal to null. Those are conditions for the first two. Else, we're either adding it as the last node of an existing list or adding it into the middle of an existing list. Now, to figure out which of these two is true, we have to do this process of taking um, our pointer and going down the list and seeing where it stops. If it gets to the very end, then we know that it's the last node on the existing list. If it's not at the very end, then we know that we're adding it in the middle of an existing list, which means we need to do this for both cases and then ask the question what happens after that. So um, I'm going to put this code, pause for a second, I'm going to put this code into place and then we'll look at that condition. So I'm going to grab this code, copy it, come over to paste it here, but now I see that I have uh, an issue, well, several issues. One, I've got these line breaks in the wrong places, so we can fix that. Um, but the other thing is that we have to do this for all of these, for both of these cases. Let me line this stuff up. So I think this has to just be an else, and inside the else. So we're going to do this for both cases. And input is bigger. Okay. There we go. All right, so we're going to go through this, and now we ask the question uh, if we're at the end of the list or not. So to decide, we have to go back to the program and figure out what's the difference between these two cases. So if we're adding as the last node of an existing list, uh, we know that p insert arrow p next is null, otherwise it's not. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so if it's the last node of an existing list, then p insert arrow p next is null. So it's going to say if p insert arrow p next is equal to null. So let's go back and put that into our code. Um, see if it is the last node, node of an existing list. So that's going to be if and here, this changes. This is iterate through the list and, um, while number is bigger than next node. Okay, so if it's the last node on the list, that would be if uh, p insert arrow p next is equal to null then we know it's the last element of the list. Otherwise, it's not. Else, here, we're inserting it to the middle of the list. Okay. There we go. And I think we need a closing brace for that one. Like so. And this is the end else up above. All right. So now we're just going to go grab the code in for both of these. So if it's the last node of an existing list, uh, last node of an existing list, that was this code right here. So grab that and put it in here. And else, it's inserted into the middle of an existing list. So that's this case for this code right here. So we'll grab that code and we will insert that into place. And again, I have to fix the, some of these characters because we're copying from another program. So copying and pasting doesn't always work correctly. Um, and then we look at this, we see something interesting. Uh, for both of these, 
we have p temporal p next. It looks like we've got some code in common for these, so maybe we can take some of that out. So we could live dangerously here and realize, well, it looks like uh, code for both of these is the same. So we could just put this code there once and not worry about these rest of these conditions. So let's try that. The compiler will tell us if it's wrong, and when we run it, we will find out. Get rid of this space, and let's go run it and see what happens. Living dangerously. Oops. Here we go. Uh, so we have some errors that we got to resolve. So first error we see here when we attempt to compile this. Let's try that again, the compile command. Um, it gives us an error here. Uh, control click for more information. I think its input isn't declared. I think we called it number instead of input. Let's try that again. All right. So now let's do two, six, four, negative one. And there we go. It works amazing. Of course, it requires some more testing, but it looks like things are in order. How wonderful. Usually, by the way, it doesn't work this well. Usually there's all sorts of problems, but we stepped through, we designed it one step at a time. So if you do that, it helps.